Hey, um, okay, so we are today going to be working on turning uh, number two, G70, G71, G72, in uh, our CNC programming. Now, <clears throat> today I am actually at the school. I have snuck in. Um, I'm in our classroom. Uh, it's just me in here. The whole place is super weird and eerie. Um, everything's closed off, locked up. Doors are taped closed as they've been sanitized. I've got another video running in my office. So I had recorded some stuff on my GoPro for some manual machining stuff, but I did not realize that you can't make like a hour long GoPro video. So I'm actually playing it on my computer and um, and then I'm recording it with my phone and then I'm going to upload that and so I'm making the immersive part uh, that's going to be in your next module that'll drop for um, Monday I believe uh, so today we're going to be making this part hopefully you can see it on my screen um, so a pretty simple part I've pull, got it pulled up in Fusion I've got the spring screen split so that we've got notepad up on the other side if you're in the book um, you want to be on page about 36 um, 35 36 would start to put you into the spot where you need to be so last time we talked about some real simple moves of just face um, turn an OD and then um, turn a little step and then we part it off all very very simple moves really just G1's G0's just to get some movement going around um, if you've not already <clears throat> sent me some information or sent me a friend request or um, send, got an invite from another friend who's a student uh, make sure you get connected to our Facebook page uh, it's a closed group it's just really our students and then our former students so our alumni um, and what's really cool about that is that we're able to um, current students are able to start to have some conversations with some former students and that's going to be a really good thing um, they can ask and answer questions you can ask and answer questions uh, be a good way for you to connect with them so uh, I encourage you guys to send me some Facebook information or you can send me a friend, uh, friend request on Facebook uh, then I will invite you to. It's called um, I think it's called Master Machinists of the Internet because we apparently no longer machine. Um, we only machine online, at least until something changes. Hey, if you're if you need to get summer classes, you need to go ahead and get those things set up. Um, I just talked to Victoria, um, and she's going to <coughs> she's going to. Uh, join our Facebook page and she'll be able to um, take care of some questions for you too. Um, so we're three minutes in. We need to make sure we get through this thing. Um, <clears throat> we're talking about G70, G71, and uh, G72. So G70 is going to be um, OD or ID stock removal cycle and today we're going to be talking about external uh, or OD stock removal and so on this part just to kind of walk you through this one, we're going to face it off. Uh, we're going to then go into a roughing cycle. We're going to rough down those steps, and then we'll use a G71. Um, or I'm sorry, we'll use a G71 to rough it, and then we'll use a G70 to finish it. Um, one thing that I had noticed as I've been grading your parts is sometimes you put you miss O's and zeros. So sometimes you might put an O where a zero goes, or a zero where an O goes. Um, those do matter. Uh, so on this one, so I'm going to start it out, capital O, one, two, three, four digits, and so I'll just call this two. Um, and I'm going to put in parentheses, turning, turning, uh, number two, and I'm going to put J right now just to give you guys a refresher from last week's we're just going to do one program a week we're not going to get through as many programs we're not going to get anything actually machined um, but this is just one bump in the road uh, it doesn't only affect you it affects every person 
everywhere in the world. Um, so this is just a bump in life, and um, so we'll we'll be okay from it. Okay, so uh, as of now, I've got my percent sign to start my program out. I've got my capital O, and uh, then I've got my four digits after that, and then my program description in parentheses, so the machine will not read that. Okay, so if you remember from last time, tool uh, 101, and that means that it is going to be <coughs> tool, let's see, let's just call it turret position one and um, tool offset one. Last time that I met with you guys, I was actually in, uh, we were on a whiteboard, and I was in, <coughs> excuse me, a Sunday school class room in our church, and that's when we we were not, absolutely no way allowed to come back in here. I've actually got permission to come back in here. I just didn't sign the paperwork for today because I was just trying to slip in and out. Try to be here for a couple hours and then that's it. It's easier for me to get stuff done if I can just come in here and do this. <clears throat> okay, so um, this indicates how I'm going to, what tool I'm going to use. Um, I might go ahead and just put a G28 in here. And if you remember, G28 is home position. Oh, this is so much easier instead of trying to work on a whiteboard. All right, so home position. This will be home position for both X and C. Okay, so now we've got our, <coughs> we went ahead and called our program up. We homed both axes. We went to tool one, offset one. Um, next thing I might want to do is go ahead and go with G0, um, then a G90. Um, I can do any of those startup commands that we like to do. G20, G40, G80. So we've got a rapid command, an inch command, um, a cutter comp, cutter comp cancellation command, uh, can cycle cancel, and, and then an absolute programming in there. Um, so now I can go ahead and do a G50, and we'll just do S1500. So the question was asked last time, <coughs> how come we would max spindle at 1500, even though our calculated RPM, um, which I'll let you guys calculate today, is going to be higher than that? Um, well, we want to make sure our spindle doesn't spin over 1500. Um, that is a, a factor that we've set for our spindle to just say we don't want our machine to go faster than this because of turret size or chuck size or stock length or some other feature in there. I can make that whatever I want. Our, our machines will go up to I think 22, 2500. Um, but in this case, I don't want my spindle to spend more than 1500. Now, that's probably just going to make my whole part turn at 1500. Now as it's um, way up here, it might go a little bit slower. As it's way down in the middle, it uh, might go all the way up to that 1500. Okay, so um, that has not turned my spindle on yet. So I can go to an M3 um, and then that would turn um, my spindle on. Let's say if I wanted to go S4500, uh, uh, it's still not going to go 4,500. Uh, even though I've turned my spindle on to 4,500, it's only going to go up to 1,500. So what I might do, um, or what I will do, is I'll do, do G96, and we'll do an S. Uh, now all I have to do is really set my spindle's um, surface footage. So 600 is, I think, just judging by memory, what I think is the surface footage for that particular part. So G96, um, S600, and then we'll do an M3. Now our spindle is going to turn on. Uh, it's going to be at a constant surface footage. And so we consider that to be C C S. Oh, sorry, CSS, constant surface footage, or constant spindle speed, constant spindle speed. And so that means that my spindle will spin faster as it gets to the middle, slower as it gets to the outside. All right, so I've got my spindle on now. Uh, I have not moved anything other than just my turret. Um, so let's look at this part. We've got, looks like we've got a piece of one inch stock. This is going to be aluminum. It's going to be 6061 aluminum. I might put that up in a note in there. So this is going to be uh, 6061 aluminum 
stock and hold out of Chuck. Oh, it's three quarters of an inch. We're going to part it off. Let's call it uh, 1.25. Um, yeah, from that'll be from the front of the jaws. Okay, so um, now I'm going to go ahead and um, start up my work offset. So I'll do a G54 X 1 Z 1. Now, on this, when you set this work offset at the machine on the Haas, you're really just going to set this to zero. Uh, so that's it's going to be using that offset. The only time you're really going to move that is if you're doing some kind of work shift. Now, not on every machine, it would not be, be like that, but this is with our four station turret um, and on our TL1s, it works a lot better if we just run it like this. Okay, so that brought our tool to approximately this section here, if you can see my arrow. Uh, so I'm about an inch in front of the part, and I'm just a little bit above the diameter. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and do G0. Uh, I, do not, I don't have to do that because I've already, I've already selected G0 up here. Uh, I'm going to do that for the redund redundancy. I'm going to go to Z.1, and then I will go... Uh, G1, Z0, and I'm going to feed it at 12 thousandths per revolution. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and put a decimal point behind that. Another thing that I had noticed on some of your else programs that you've submitted over the past week or so, um, missing a few decimal points. You can miss decimal points on zero, but it's a good habit to just always start to be in on that. Um, okay, so I'm up to the front of the part. I'm going to go to X minus 30 thousandths. I've already got a feed rate in, so I can leave it alone. Uh, faced it off, and then I'm going to go G0, X1, Z.1. Okay, so now I'm back up at the front of the part, up to about here. So now what I want to do is I want to start just ripping this thing down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into a G71. G71 setup with some parameters. It's got a P, a Q, a U, a W, a D, and an F. So it's a can cycle. So P is where I want it to start. It's going to be the end code that I want it to start at. Q is going to be the end code that I want my profile to stop at. U is going to be the X offset. Uh, w is the Z offset. So U and W are incremental X and Z. So by doing that, I'm telling it I want to maybe leave 10,000s in X and 5,000s in Z. Uh, then D is my depth of cut. That's on the diameter. And then um, feed rate is my, or my F is my feed rate. So I am going to start on line one. So that's numbered line one, and I'm going to stop it at Q2, okay? And I'll, I'll kind of walk you through that as we go. U is going to be 10 thousandths. That's a diameter of 10 thousandths. Um, w is 5, 5 thousandths off the face. Depth of cut is going to be 50 thousandths. And feed rate is going to be 12, okay? So what I'm going to do now, go ahead and go on down to the next line, line one. So now you noticed up until now I have not been line numbering no N1, N2, N3, N4, or N5, 10, 15, 20. So N1 is going to start, so N1 is equal to P1. Okay, so P1, N1. So just kind of associate these, those two, two things together. The bottom of my profile will be N2. It is Q2. So even though this says N and this says Q, one is the start, two is the finish. Okay. So now on this one, external turning, N1 is going to be a rapid move, G0, to my lowest diameter. All right, so let's look at the print. What is my lowest diameter? All my diameters are listed here. 
uh, half inch, three quarter inch, 950. So our lowest diameter is 500,000. So G0, X, 0.5. Um, and that's all that I need on that line. My next line is going to be, so at this point, I am still 100,000 in front of my part. And so all I'm going to do is trace this thing out, starting from here, as though I were to take it in one giant cut. Okay. So uh, I wrap it down. My next move is a feed one, G1. So each one of these steps is a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to go back, G1, Z minus 0.25. Next line, x point seven five. Next line, z minus point five. All right, can get some more, can get some more room here. All right, so I went back to point five. Now I go up x point nine five. So now I'm all the way up here. And now my last line is going to be, um, actually, there's a couple different ways we can do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you two different ways of doing this. Um, let's go ahead and say it like this. My next line is gonna be Z minus um, 7585, Nine. Let's go back nine five. So z minus point nine five. I'm accounting for one twenty five for my part off tool, and then I just gave myself a little bit extra to play with. Now my my last line now could be my um, move back up in x to one inch. Okay. So I started at one inch, one hundred thousandths and I'm going to finish at one inch and it's going to go back to 100 thousandths. Um, another way of doing that, um, nah, let's leave it like this for now. This will be, this will really be about the best way to do it for now. Okay, so um, what we've done is basically you've got in one down here, in two back here. We'll kind of trace this thing out uh, just for finish on it, okay? so. Um, now, I'm going to go G0, Z5, uh, and I'm going to do an M01, and um, yeah, let's do an M01. Um, we'll just put a, move, or a note in here, check part, diameters. What I've told it, leave 10, leave 5. So um, 500 is 510, 750 is 760. Quarter inch step is really 245. So now I can come back and, and, and do a finish pass on this. Now what's really slick about this, on this one we're just gonna use the same tool, so still T1. Um, if I want to, I can take all of this information, copy it, just paste it down here if I want to. Okay. Um, and this will give me a startup if I wanted to come back in and just rerun that tool. Now what's here's what's super cool is I can go G70 and I can go P1 and I can go to Q2 and I can change the feed rate if I want to. Feed eight or I could also put a feed here of eight. Same thing, just redundancy. Now, what it's gonna do is it's going to, from this point, I check my diameters are 10 over. I pull my tool back up and it's gonna to go to 100 thousands. It's gonna to go to one inch, then 100 thousands. And now it's gonna go in and search for a Q1 or a P1 and a Q2, but the machine knows that that's really N1 and N2. So it's gonna go down through the program and it's gonna find N1 going to find in two and it's going to rerun that path as one single finish move um, diameter face diameter face diameter and then up and out of there all in one shot feeding at this feed rate now if I wanted to um, maybe I kick my RPM up just 
making up RPMs here, um, 850, um, whatever it might be. Now, if you notice, I again, I did not put coolant in there. A lot of times when I run my first part, I will not run coolant just so I can make sure I'll just turn coolant off and on at the machine. Um, because what I don't want to have happen is I lean my head in there or be looking at something and have that coolant nozzle start to spray on me. Okay, so um, if I'm happy there, don't need all of that. Go here, copy, and paste. Okay, and that takes care of that tool. So that tool is completely done now. Um, so that took care of all of my diameters. So I don't have to go in and take a pass, wrap it up, wrap it back, wrap it down, feed, wrap it up, wrap it back, wrap it down, feed. I can come in and do this all in lineal motion, feeding in the x-axis with a G71. Now, what if, what if I wanted to face that off? Say I didn't have the ability to change tools and I had just a drop-in tool holder, and I only had one one way to do this, and I still need to part it off. Okay, so that's not a problem. I can change this to a G72. Um, I can take steps. I can face off down this whole part. So I could use my eighth-inch wide parting tool, face it, face it, face it, face it, all the way down. It's on page 37 of your book. Exact same situation. We're just stepping over in the face. And so if I've got a 125 wide tool, I'm probably stepping over 100 thousandths each pass and then I can finish that thing off. So pretty straightforward there. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and do my finish tool, or my part off tool. Um, I think, I'm gonna zip down here just for a second and take a look in Canvas. I don't wanna get you ahead of things. Oh, let's see, I actually need to be in Fusion. Go back here and see all of your projects. Okay, I don't want to show you that yet. I want to, I want to try and keep on track. Don't want to get ahead of myself. Okay, so still have our one-inch part. We could copy in our other. Um, part off that we had in there before. That's probably what I would do if I already had that. Um, I don't because we did it on a whiteboard last time. Um, so we're fine. We're going to do T404. It's going to be a part off tool. Okay. Now I can use some of the same stuff I had there from there before. Nah, I don't want that. Um, but I will take we'll take this stuff out of there. All right. So here I don't want to go as fast at all. 500 would be my spindle max on that. Um, Go something like 200. So 200 surface footage. Um, now, as my parting tool parts off, it's going to move towards the center uh, from that one inch diameter all the way down to negative 30 thousandths. The spindle using this G96 is going to make the spindle go faster and faster until it reaches 500 RPM. I don't want to go beyond that. Um, because that would be, it's going to be a huge problem for me. I don't want this thing to be spending 3,000, 4,000 RPM and come flinging off of there. So I'm going to show you how to do something pretty, pretty slick as we go. Now this will not work. Um, our next module is going to be uh, using a G75 for parting and grooving. It's a can cycle. Um, I'm going to show you just a little bit different way to part something off. It's a pretty slick, um, pretty slick way. So. Part off tool is um, yep, part off tool 125 wide. So we are going to go to what? Part 750 
our tool is touched off on the front side, so it's got to go back um, 850, 875 at least, right? So G0. Z minus 0.875. I don't have my calculator with me. I'm just guessing that one. Just doing some quick math. All right, so now I'm at one inch diameter. I'm back 750 thousandths in X. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to G1. I'm going to go down to, last time we went to X of negative 30 thousandths and then our part parted off. I'm going to go down to X of 100 thousandths. I'm going to feed it at 3. Now when I get down there to this 3 or this 100 thousandths, I am going to draw my spindle speed down. M3S100 and um, I'm going to go G97. G97 will keep my spindle from speeding up and down so it's just going to go at 100 RPMs. And now I'm going to go G1, X minus 0 0.030. Uh, same feed rate. So here's what happened is, is I get down to this 100 thousandths diameter. And then I kick it down to 100 RPM. And I go ahead and face off that last 30 thousandths. Or I'm sorry, I face off that last 100 thousandths. And I'm going to go down to, to negative 30 thousandths. That's going to allow that part to drop off there, spinning at a much lower RPM. So that way I don't have to worry about it flinging off. Um, if I've got an opportunity where I, I can have a machine with the doors open, I might catch it. Um, I would not do that in our shop. That's not okay. Uh, safety switches are always engaged. Um, but maybe you work on a machine that doesn't have a, a door or um, some type of safety guard in front of it. Um, no matter what, so whether you catch it or a parts catcher catches it, which would be a lot safer. Um, it's going to be spinning a lot slower, so it's, you're going to have a, a better chance of that thing hitting the the can or the cup, and then um, also it's not going to get it's less likely to get all dinged up. All right, so we parted it off. We're going to wrap it back up to X. Whoops, X of one inch, uh, just so, for some redundancy, um, just in case our part off blade broke or bent or slid back. Um, Something happened, you know, just in case something happens that would cause that to give us not, not part off all the way. So from there on out, I'll probably go ahead and go Z, um, five inches, then I do a G28. And then I would do an M30. Make sure you're putting M30s. That's another thing I noticed. A couple of you guys had not put M30s at the end of your programs. Uh, you need to have those in there. All right, so. Here's what I want you to do, is I want you to um, copy down um, a program that uh, I want you to just follow along with what I did. And I want you to um, spend a little bit of time this week looking at some uh, Haas tips of the day uh, or uh, asking some questions, uh, finding out. I want you to tell me. Uh, some useful information about um, CNC lathe turning, whether it's some insert information, whether it's a program information. Um, some, you know, it can be a random fact that um, what year Haas came out or how many machines Akuma comes out with every year or what's how, how many axes can you have on a CNC lathe. Uh, so some related, uh, some lathe related question, uh, and I want you to post it uh, and make a post on our Facebook page, that's Master Machines of the Internet, and then that way I'll know that you're watching these things all the way through. So your assignment uh, for, for next week, so I'll load this up for Tuesday, uh, you'll just see this early if you're looking at the YouTube channel. Um, I'll, I'll have this set up for Tuesday, and um, and so this will be the assignment that you need to submit. So just submit me this program. Um, what I'm what I did on last assignment is I I, I mean if you did the assignment I, I pretty much gave you a win on it. Um, I'm going to scrutinize these just a little bit more as we go. Um, otherwise everybody's getting 100 percent. So um, anyways that's what we're that's what we're going to do. So. Um, Submit this and um, should be good to go.
So, um, all right, you guys have a wonderful week. And, um, you know, watch some videos, ask some questions, um, do some research. You guys should be already working on um, some interview questions and some other stuff that you guys were doing in other classes. But keep up the good work. Um, if you have questions about print reading or heat treat, um, Master Machines of the Internet is still the place to go for all of those things. All right, see you later.